So this is an episode of Scott Talks Law and welcome once again to another episode of Scott Talks Law. So in this episode shall be talking about commercial credit and security under the unit of commercial law. So starting with commercial credit, uh, commercial credit has been defined in many instances to uh, mean or to refer to someone's financial standings. So someone's financial standing is referred to as commercial credit. When someone's financial standing is good, then we say that that person's credit is good. So there are two, ty- there are two types of uh, credits. We have secured credits and unsecured credits. And you need to note that uh, commercial credit plays a major part or an important part in the law of commerce. So under legal terms, commercial credit has been uh, defined to mean someone's financial accommodations. So financial accommodations in legal terms refer to as credit. So under security, under commercial security, uh, security is that one which is being hold, held by a, maybe a bank or a, a lender uh, when, a, when a piece of ma- when the money has been lended to the borrower. So uh, when a lender gives money to a borrower, this lender faces or is, faces some risks. This money may be paid or may not be paid. So that to avoid this risk that usually incurred during borrowing of money, this person might request for security. The, borrow, the lender must request for some security. So he might request a security maybe in form of a motor vehicle logbook or a land title deed. So this land title deed or the motor vehicle logbook will or shall be held as a security as they the await the payment of this uh, particular amount of money or the debt because if there is no security then that money uh, won't be paid. So if this person or the borrower does not pay the money, then this uh, piece of property that is being hold, held can be sold uh, to compensate for that amount of money. So under security, you have two types of security. You have real security and personal security. So under real security, you have real possessory security and real non-possessory security. So under real possessory security, we have um, under real possessory security, we have lien and uh, pledge. And real and possessory security, we have a charge and a mortgage. And a real possessory security, we have lien and a pledge. And a real and possessory security, we have a charge and a mortgage. We also have uh, uh, the second type of security. I refer, uh, a second type of security, we have personal security, and this is where it involves a guarantor and a surety. So. Uh, a surety assumes a primary responsibility and a guarantor assumes secondary responsibility. So the guarantor assumes secondary responsibility and the guarantor is someone who is well known to the surety. So the surety is the principal data, the principal data who has borrowed that piece of money. So there is contract of guarantee that is involved in the personal security. This contract of guarantee involves both the guarantor and the surety. And uh, in cases where the, sh- the surety will not pay, the principal data will not pay that amount, then the bank will go after the surety to, uh, so that the surety uh, pays that, piece, that amount of money in the absence of the guarantor. So this guarantor must be someone well known to the surety. And the surety can also sue the, the principal data or the, the guarantor can sue the principal data or the surety in uh, some circumstances that we, shall, we are going to see. So, um, so under commercial security, anyone providing credit to anyone must face that uh, risk that maybe the, the, it may be paid or may not be paid. In order to guard yourself against those risks, the data and ability to pay a creditor is able to. You can inquire in the credit worthiness of this person who is who is intending to buy, and you can also uh, request for a security. And the security can be either real or personal security. So real security may be either possessory or non-possessory security. Possessory real security is the possession is at the, the, the heart of the security. Under the possession, possessory real security, possession is at the heart of that security. So um, it may so it may be lost if the creditor loses possession. So if the creditor loses the possession of that uh, piece of security, then that security will be lost. For the security to be effective, the lender must in some way be uh, in possession of that piece of property. So the lender must be in that possession of the property. So official assignee of Madras versus Mercantile Bank of India Limited, 1935, SC 53, PC at 53. Possessory security includes a pledge and a lien. 
as it was said in the Makandai case in India. So a pledge, uh, the the heart of the what forms the heart of the pledge is the delivery of the goods. So it's created by the delivery of goods by one person, a pledge to another, the pledge by way of security. It's created by the delivery of goods from the pledge to the pledge. It's just like a bailment where the bailor and the bailer are involved. The bailor gives the goods to the bailor to assume temporary ownership of the goods. Also here we have the pledge and the pledge. So the pledge does. So the so a pledge is in form of bailment. A pledge makes a pledge. So a, so um. So a pledge has that duty of care to hold these goods in, on the behalf of the pledge as there always the payment of the final amount, the payment of the debt. So you have three essential elements of a pledge. The three essential elements of a pledge. So um, delivery and a pledge forms the heart of it. So delivery forms the heart of a pledge. And we have uh, three essential characteristics of a pledge. So a pledge, there is a contract. In a pledge, there is a contract. There is a contract in a pledge, and the pledge has the right. The pledge has the right to redeem the title of ownership that uh, from the pledge. So the pledge, the pledge has the right to redeem the title. And uh, another third, a third element of a uh, essential element of a pledge is that um, the pledge must give uh, title ownership title to the pledge. The pledge must uh, give that ownership title to the pledge. So a pledge is created by a contract. Position of the property pledge or documents of title must be delivered uh, actually or constructively to the pledge. So the pledge must deliver that those documents. So there is delivery in a pledge to the pledge. And also there is um, so redemption of title. The pledge has the right to redemption the, or to redeem of redemption upon the discharge of debts or other obligation. So if the pledge pays all the debts and uh, he discharges all the money or pays everything, he has the right to redeem the title that he had, he had delivered or she had delivered. So a termination of a pledge, a pledge can be terminated either by tendering the amount due. If the pledge if the pledge tenders that amount, then a pledge can be terminated by the delivery of the pledged item to the pledge without reservation. If the, that a property is redelivered re to the pledge without reservation, then that pledge agreement can be terminated. Acceptance of alternative security. So if a pledge accepts alternative forms of securities, then um, that pledge agreement uh, will be terminated. So if alternative forms of security is accepted by the pledge, then that can be terminated. And the sale of the pledged item to recover the debts after the default. So if the pledge had defaulted in paying the amount of money, the debt, then the pledge had that right to sell that piece of property. So after he sells that piece of property, then that uh, pledge agreement uh, will be terminated. The second form of uh, real possessory property is the lien. So uh, under lien, a lien is defined in the case of Harmon versus uh, Barclays, 1802, 2 East, 227. The case of Harmon versus Barclays. And um, a lien is as a right uh, in one mind to retain that which has already, which already is already in his possession, belonging to another until certain uh, demands are satisfied. So under lien, you have this right to retain a piece of property that belongs to someone else until some um, money is paid or some agreement or some uh, until some certain demands are satisfied. The demands that you had set uh, between you yourself, you two parties. So it differs from a pledge. It differs from a pledge so that um, it differs from a pledge in that the existence of a pledge depends on delivery, and the existence of lien does not depend on delivery. Here is just where you retain this property. And a pledge is where you deliver this property to the pledge. But here the pledge retains this property until the payment of that piece of money, just in possession of this property. It's not, it does not involve delivery of this property. The car will not be taken to that uh, bank. So this person is just in return. We hold this property until the, that particular amount is paid. If it's not paid, then he's allowed to uh, sell this property and uh, get compensated here. To, so that it can be compensated. So uh, let's look at none. So it's based on the retention and continuous possession. We just retain this uh, property. Lien is based on retention and continuous property. And you continue, you continue to possess it. So it can also be terminated by the where by the lien not tendering the amount 
of the or the date secured so the lieno can tell us that amount that or that date then that can be if he tells us that amount then that can be lien can be terminated so if the lien may if the lien may waive the form of uh, the lien so if he waives that form of lien then it can be terminated loss of the possessors loss of the possessor so if the lien accepts alternative form of security so if an alternative form of security is accepted then termination can occur or will or shall occur so let's look at non possessory real uh, security non possessory real security so there are two types of non possessory real security we have a mortgage and a, a charge we have a mortgage and a charge so the lender retains property rights in the property but does not necessarily is not necessary in possession you just have that rights in the property you have those property but you are not in possession you do not have that document of title so the land act uh, article 79 section 79 subsection 1 an owner of a private a private land or a lease uh, by an instrument in the prescribed form may charge the interest in the land or a uh, part of part thereof for any purpose so you can charge the interest in the land or part there for part or a part therefore for any purpose so section 80 subsection 1 a charge shall have effect as a security only and shall not operate as a transfer of any interest in the rights or the rights in the land from a charge to the charge so you not you shall not transfer the interest in the land you shall not give the title of ownership in a charge so so this charge shall just serve as a security but no transfer of interest in that piece of charge for that land according to uh, section 80 subsection 1 of the law so um so the mortgage a mortgage is the security rights under the first under the under the facility created by a financial institution in favor of a borrower so a mortgage is created by a financial institution to favor that borrower so the current land law in Kenya does not uh, differentiate between a charge and a mortgage. In fact, a mortgage has been replaced with a charge in the current laws of Kenya. So there is no contextual, contextual uh, di difference between the two. So the Land Act does not have a provision on mortgage and land registration act. To the, there is no provision that provides for a mortgage and a charge under the Land Registration Act. So uh, let's look at the personal security as a second category of security. So we're done with the real security. We looked at the real possessory security and real and possessory security. And the real possessory security, we looked at the, the lien and the pledge. And the real and possessory security, we looked at the mortgages and the charges. So the personal security, and uh, our focus here is on the guarantor, on the guarantee. So it was held in the case of Henry Mugua versus Patrick Gachie Kigo, HCC 652-2004. 2004 that the purposes of a guarantee was not necessarily a burden to the guarantor with another person's burden especially where the principal data was totally unmoved so um so for this reason a guarantor has the right to sue the principal data to recover the amount due to him after he has made good this after he has, he has made good his guarantee to the creditor. So the guarantor has that right to sue the principal data of the, or the surety. After he has made good his guarantee to the creditor. So under, we, we have a contract of guarantee under personal security. Under guarantee contract, it may be oral or in, read, in written form, at implied or expressed. It can be oral or in written, can also be implied or expressed. So in most cases, term, the terms of the guarantee will have been drafted by the creditor and often relying to the standards of the contract. So the creditor drafts the terms of the guarantee that shall be relied by a party, depending on the standards and form of the contract. So a contract involves the surety and the guarantor, and a claim under guarantee must prove the indebtedness of the principal data first and it was, as it was held in the case of Joseph Kirudia versus Barclays Bank of Kenya Limited. And another. So, the definiteness of the of the surety or the principal data must be looked at first before uh, going for the guarantor. A claim under guarantee must must uh, prove the indebtedness of the principal data first. So, the lender has to exhaust all the remedies against the principal data before turning it to the guarantor. So, you must exhaust all the remedies that are available for the principal data or the surety before going for the guarantor. So you need to be careful um, what committed you sign up as a guarantor. So uh, as a guarantor, 
you need to be careful of the commitment you sign up and to say it in the case in the insolvency clause one of 2000 in the case of eco bank kenya limited versus francis uh tolem working baby 2018 eklr kenya law reports so in the case in the case in so in insolvency clause one of 2017 so the creditors filed a petition to declare the grantor uh, bankrupt because the principal debt had defaulted in paying the loan and the grantor had, no, had not also made good conduct of the guarantee. So the grantor had not made good conduct of the guarantee. So the court in Macau, the court Macau J dismissed the grantor's argument that he had been wrongfully sued. So the guarantee was not wrongfully sued. So as a guarantee, as a guarantee. As a guarantor, you need to be careful uh, what commitment you sign up to because you will be liable. So, sure, so you surety assumes that uh, primary responsibility and the guarantor assumes the secondary responsibilities in that particular uh, in that particular agreement. So that is the end of my lecture about uh, commercial credit and security.